Does that mean that it won't be uh, maintained there as well? Uh, is it just the moment as well or something? Sorry to interrupt, the report is quite clear, the maintenance, just to avoid the confusion, the maintenance of the square will remain in, as it is now entirely with pattern of the square, so there will be no change to that, be no change to the sweeping, cleaning, washing of the area at all. It's a bit good. It's very simple, Chairman, uh, the individual point of view, if it isn't broken, we don't fix it. I've seen pattern of the square managed efficiently as is, uh, they were very efficient with regard to the camp. So why do we do this? Chairman, thank you. Um, you'll be aware that uh, Badlosa Square falls into my ward, and so I speak um, very much uh, with that in mind. Um, one of the issues uh, which uh, is perhaps not entirely well brought out in this report is that it is not true to say that all the tenants speak with one voice on this matter. Different tenants in Badlosa Square balance the interests of all the people. 
back of that. The first point is, do we in any way weaken the ability um, to um, remove, if necessary, um, protesters um, if it becomes a city walkway? But then secondly, on clause 3A, um, the first part um, of 3A gives, in terms of public safety and security, is confirmation of the corporation and officer that leads to the rank of um, in the um, city police superintendent. Then it's other than the case of minimum threat, which such confirmation must be obtained in six hours of suspension coming into force, or the suspension must cease. Um, I mean, that on its face means that for six hours we can impose it without, uh, it doesn't matter that you don't get the subsequent um, police confirmation because the suspension would have been in place for six, six hours. Now that may be the necessary balance that, that's been um, um, coming forward. And I suppose, presumably, if the owners were just successively to go from one six hour suspension to another, each one being refused at the end of the six hours, we presume we've got that as an abuse of the agreement. Um, anyway, I'm just looking for confirmation to be nodded there. So it's really then just, um, uh, I, I, I might be brought you to support it, um, but just asking those two questions in respect to the balance. Thank you. Um, the, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yes, like everyone else here, I was also far too young to be around when this was originally considered. But nevertheless, I am totally supportive of this compromise. I think really had a policy, it's, it's a sound policy, and officers have worked hard, quite clearly, with all the interested parties to come up with this compromise. And the important point about this compromise to me is it, if you like, safeguards the long term future for all interested parties rather than for the few. So I totally support the proposal. Thank you. I want to now move to the end of this discussion. The director, oh. Um, I'll answer the uh, technical points raised by Mr. Andrew and Mr. Jones, if I may. Um, Mr. Andrew asked um, a very um, good question, actually, about why Recommendation 3 is framed in terms of an agreement with the owner, um, rather than those restrictions being imposed at the behest of the city. Um, and the reason for that is it's a technical one, I'm afraid, um, in that the um, various powers at 67 only allows limitations on the public access enjoyed over the city walkways if those limitations are expressed in an agreement with the owner or in the planning condition. And the planning condition didn't contain any of those limitations. Uh, and that's why in order to make these arrangements fit within the statutory regime, we're entering into an agreement uh, to enshrine those limitations. But I'm hopeful that, that will be a fairly straightforward exercise. Thank you. Director? And then, and then in, in response to uh, Mr. Jones's question about um, the advantage of having a walkway, and more particularly whether its status as a city walkway would uh, affect the ability to avoid an occupy incident, for example. Um, well, the status of the city walkway is that um, there are rights of access granted for the public to pass and repass on foot as of right once the city walkway is designated. Um, and in addition, various elements of uh, legislation relating to highways um, uh, are brought in so that they apply equally to city walkway. And that means that if there were to be uh, an obstruction, then the normal um, procedures for getting rid of that obstruction, which we're very familiar with from the Occupy arrangements, um, would come into play. Whereas as long as it remains in private ownership, um, it, uh, the private owner could obtain an injunction, as they did in this case, before the city walkway declaration, uh, and simply prohibit access. <coughs> However, having, um, there has been liaison with the police, I know, and the police are very um, aware of the concerns of the owners, um, and also feel that during the process of uh, the Occupy case and the judgments that were made, that's gone a very long way to clarify the circumstances in which um, obstructions on highway or indeed city walkway could be enforced, and that in itself means that in the future, um, taking steps to remedy obstructions, I think the police feel, and I agree, uh, would be a lot easier given the clarification that was um, provided through that case. Thank you. Director, do you wish to say any more? I think so, yeah. except the fire engine point, we actually did clear.
here, I think they need a suitable for foreign. Um, therefore, I'm now asking the committee if they would agree with this compromise uh, solution to the problem which has been hanging around for a very long time, uh, and to agree to the recommendations which are set out on page 103. 